Hello, hello, welcome to your practice. I'm Trin Perkins and I'm really excited to guide you through a yoga flow that I put together for people like me who spend most of their time sitting, especially during the work day. So if that's you, if you have been scrunched up and hunched up with your shoulders elevated to your ears, you are in the right spot for a cozy, easeful practice to help create some space in parts of the body that tend to get stiff or hold tension from prolonged periods of sitting. So the hips, the full length of the spine, the shoulders, and the neck. You will not need anything for this practice. You may notice that I'm sitting up on a blanket just for cushion for the opening portion as we sit here and get grounded. But throughout the rest of the practice, all you'll need is your body. So take a moment, transition into your space maybe taking a series of deep breaths, the deepest breaths that you've taken all day. You're welcome to keep your eyes open or if it's more comfortable, you can take your gaze down out to the tip of your nose. You can turn your palms down onto your knees, onto your thighs, if you'd like to feel more grounded. Depending on what time of day you're practicing, you might like to flip your palms up for a more receptive and energetic vibe. It's completely up to you. And as I said, welcome to your practice, heavy emphasis on your, this is all about you. I'm simply here to guide you and offer suggestions, but please do what feels best for you. I want this to feel good and to feel easeful. So feel free to pull back if you notice any pain or discomfort and also to linger anywhere that feels really good and really nice. We'll start by taking a few deep breaths. So big inhale through your nose, really filling up your lungs to the very top. And once you've gotten to the top, take another sip before fully exhaling out through your mouth. Do that three more times on your own pace Inhaling through your nose, extra little sip at the top, full exhale through your mouth. Allowing your breath to be a sort of internal massage for your nervous system. Allowing your breath to guide you throughout our practice. Take another deep breath cycle here. And then if you notice that you are leaning in toward your seat, whether your legs are crossed or open, shift back just a touch so that you feel your sits bones. They're like the feet of your pelvis anchored down onto whatever surface supports you. Find a little length up through your spine, relax your shoulders away from your ears. And then with your gaze soft and focused on nothing in particular, Maybe you set an intention for how you'd like to move on your mat. Maybe there's an energy that you'd like to cultivate or a word or a phrase that you've been tossing around in your mind, something that guides you, a personal mantra. And with your normal breathing and a comfortable upright posture, solidify that intention by repeating it twice to yourself. And you're welcome to bring your gaze back up through center. If you've had your legs crossed, you can switch the cross. Keeping your hands on your hips, start to, or on your knees, start to make some big sweeping hip circles. So maybe you have to grab onto your knees as you send your chest forward. And as you lean back, you're using your legs as an anchor here, stirring that pot, working into the low back, the hips. You can inhale on the way back and fully exhale as you go forward. But don't allow your breath to trip you up. As long as you're breathing, you're fine here. If you need that extra guidance, you can match breath with movement, but I don't want that to trip you up here. 
And then let's switch direction. So sending the chest forward, grabbing on to the knees as you pull back, maybe a little rounding of your spine going forward. And you'll notice the longer you practice with me, sometimes my count is a little off. So if we did more or less in one direction, just know that the benefits are the same. And you're welcome to add a couple more or stop. But I will do my best to cue you like now for the last one in this direction. Very good. And then uncross your legs, send them wide so that your heels are down and your toes are up. Once again, find those sit bones. Reach your arms all the way up, big inhale. And then as you exhale, hinge forward at the hips, find somewhere for your hands to land. So maybe it's really far out, even maybe off of the, of the camera angle that you can see here, or you can pull back. It depends on how the underside of your legs are feeling. So we're not necessarily looking to push our limits here, but I do want you to get some stretch sensation. So something that you can notice as a guide to where you may need to push a little further or pull back. So you can relax your toes. And then once you find that perfect sweet spot, maybe you sway side to side. And just notice how that changes the sensations that run along the back of the legs and deep into the hips and the low back. Invite some softness into your face. So maybe you separate your teeth. Don't clench your teeth. Let your cheeks go soft. And if you're having a hard time with that, relax your belly. Sometimes if you're holding tension through your stomach or trying to like brace your core, that also tightens up other muscles in the face. So feel free to relax. We'll sway side to side or hold this posture for another breath cycle, big inhale. And exhale and then walk yourself up and place your hands behind you so that your fingertips are pointing away from your butt. Press your hands into the mat behind you and opening up your chest, maybe even lifting your chin to stretch the front part of your throat. You can rock side to side here if that feels good. And then coming back through center, use your hands to bring your legs back in. We'll come back to that cross-legged position. So left hand comes down, right arm sweeps up and over and leaning over to the left. So bending into the left arm, creating a really long line of energy from the middle finger on the right hand all the way down through the hips. Do your best to keep that right butt cheek anchored as best as you can, but still create a long energy line here. And then as you inhale, come back up, right hand goes down. <sighs> Big exhale, left arm reaches up and over. You can bend into your right arm as much as you'd like. We'll flow side to side. So inhale, come up. <sighs> exhale, over. One breath, one movement or a simple pause before transitioning. Let's do one more on each side. Once again, inviting that softness back into your face by force of habit, sometimes the teeth want to grit. So give them permission to relax, to soften. Very good. One more position seated with your legs crossed. You're welcome to switch the cross or even uncross your legs if that feels best. We'll take a seated twist here. So big inhale, reach your arms forward and up. Find some length through your spine. And then as you exhale, twist over to the right. So you can use your left arm as kind of an anchor outside of your right knee here. And then your right hand goes on the mat behind you. Find that length through your spine. And looking over to the right or even taking your gaze a little further over the right shoulder, toward the right shoulder. Do your best to not lean back or dump all your weight into your right hand. Try to find length, so lifting up 
through the top of the head. Two more breaths. And then as you come back through center, you're welcome to lift your arms again. And then exhale over to the left. So right arm outside of left knee. And then left hand to the mat behind you. Once again, coming up tall through the crown of the head. And then an option to take your gaze to the left or even further over the left shoulder. And we'll take two breaths from here. Very good, coming back through center. Move my blanket out of the way. We'll come on to tabletop. So all fours, knees are stacked underneath your hips and your palms are stacked underneath your shoulders. We'll take cat-cow. So the belly lowers and the gaze lifts as you inhale. And then as you exhale, press the mat away. Top of the spine grows really tall, spread the shoulder blades. Inhale to cow and exhale to cat. Moving at a pace that feels good for you. Toes can be tucked or untucked, whatever makes you feel most anchored. And one more time in both directions here. Exhale as the top of your spine grows tall. And inhale as your belly dips. And coming back through center. Reach your right arm up, maybe looking at the thumb on the right hand, and then threading your right arm underneath your left. You'll start to lower down so that your right temple comes to the mat. We'll thread the needle. You're welcome to reach your left arm out if that feels best for you, or you can keep it hugged into the side of the body here. So thoracic rotation, the middle of the spine that tends to get really sticky and hard to reach. This is a great twist here to reach those parts. Take a deep breath in. Big exhale one more time. And then we'll come out of this the same way that we came in. So reaching your right arm back up and then placing it down other side. So left arm sweeps up, maybe looking at the thumb on the left hand and then threading the left arm underneath the right. Left temple lowers down. I thought I tied my hair back, but I'm like eating hair here. So <laughs> don't mind me. Option to have your right arm reach out. Left arm is tucked underneath. Hmm. If you have that right arm extended, pull it back in. And then we'll come out the same way that we came in. So lifting up the left. There you go. Nice job. Another few rounds of cat and cow. Reset the spine here. Maybe noticing a little less stickiness. And if you still feel sticky, which is totally fine, a moment of gratitude for simply being on your mat, for being able to move in a way that nourishes your body no matter how it looks. Gratitude for your practice. Nice. We'll come into a child's pose so you can bring your big toes together and your knees really wide apart here. So you're gonna walk your arms forward Shift your hips back. Try to get your butt close to your heels, but it does not need to touch. And then lower all the way down so that your forehead rests on the mat and your arms are extended. So if this is not comfortable on your knees for whatever reason, you're welcome to go back into that tabletop and lower your chest down in puppy pose. So maybe less bend through the knees feels better for you. You have options and you don't owe anyone an explanation as to why you pick what you pick. This is your practice. I'm going to settle back down into child's pose. 
this is what I need today. But again, choose what feels best for you. We're going to hold this for three breath cycles. So that's in through the nose and then fully exhale, paying extra attention to send your breath to any parts of the body that may be holding on to tension or gripping. Give a little energetic nod to those areas. That breath, that's that internal massage for your organs, your nervous system to help you relax. One more breath. And then slowly peel yourself up. We'll come into one child's, uh, sorry, one um, downward facing dog. I got my mind on child's pose. It feels so good to me. So we'll come into one downward facing dog. So from tabletop, walk your arms out further in front. Tuck the toes under and send your hips up and back. So that your hips are the highest point of this posture, which may mean that you need to walk the feet in. Your knees can be bent and you're going to turn your arm so that the crease of your arm is facing as close to forward as possible. So coming up out of the shoulder joints, driving the heels down toward the mat, even if they do not touch. Your hips are the highest point. There's so much length through your spine. Your shoulders are secure. And your knees can be bent if that feels best for you. Two more breaths here. And then slowly come back down to your knees. Rising up from the waist. So you're on your knees here, stacking the hips right on top of your knees. Take your hands to the small of your back and just open up your chest here. So no big expressions, nothing fancy, just opening up the chest, pressing the shoulders back. And from here, step your right foot forward. So you're in a high lunge here. And without moving or shifting your weight forward, you can take one hand to the small of your back and then one hand to your belly and sort of scoop your tailbone under. And what you're looking for here is a nice stretch, some sensations through the front part of the left hip, so your hip flexor. So a lot of times you'll see people leaning forward excessively trying to achieve this same stretch. But if you notice a simple shift forward is really all you need to feel that, that sensation. So you can have your hands, one resting on your right knee and maybe one on your hip. Holding here, keep that left butt cheek tight. Nice deep breaths. And you can bring the knees back together, place your hands on the small of your back, send the chest forward, press the elbows back. One more breath. Very good. And then step the left foot forward. And here too, take a hand to the belly. If you notice your pelvis is tipping and then tuck under so that we're getting the stretch all through the front part of the right hip. So the right butt cheek is tight. Take a hand to the hip and a hand to the knee. I'm just holding here. Focusing on your breath. If you feel like your balance is an issue, you can always walk your foot a little further. One more breath here. And then coming back into tabletop, swing the legs back. Take another round of cat and cow. Then you can transition onto your backs, so maybe swinging the legs over to the right, coming forward, lowering down slowly here. So maybe taking the arms out and slowly lowering all the way down. Nice job. Once you get here, 
<sighs> reach your arms over your head, extend your legs out. You may notice a little lift in the small of your back. Reach, find length, be swiveling your wrists and your ankles curling up the toes, embracing whatever little pops and cracks are left over. Nice job. And then bringing your arms back down by your side, you can bend the knees and scoop the tailbone under here. Use both hands to hug the right knee in toward your chest. And then you can slowly creep that left leg out. So options here to draw some circles again with the right ankle. Maybe scrunching up the toes. And then use your right hand to open up the right knee. Come back through center, use your left hand to take that knee halfway across the body. And then use both hands to pull it back in. So right hand to open up the right knee. Back through center, the left hand will pull the knee across just halfway here. Both hands hug the knee in. There you go. And then walking the left leg back in. Take your right ankle and cross it over the left knee. So you want the ankle bone to be off the knee. We're not compressing the ankle bone onto um, the knee here. Flexing your right foot. This may be all you need to get that opening through the hips. Or maybe you want to take it a little bit deeper by grabbing on to maybe the shin or the back of the, the leg on the left and pulling your knees in. You can always rock side to side or find stillness, whatever feels best for you. This is reclined figure four or an option for pigeon. You can always take it on your back in this shape. One more breath. And then release. Using both hands to hug the left knee in, creep the right leg out. Nice little tug there. Option to draw some circles with the ankle, scrunching the toes. Left hand will open the left knee out to the side. Back through center, the right hand will take the knee across the body about halfway. And then back through center, both hands will hug the knee in toward the chest. Left hand, left knee, open up. Back through center, take the right hand and draw the knee across halfway. And then coming back in through center, give it a good hug in. Walk the right knee in. Left ankle over right knee. Same options here to hold tight and feel that opening or to pick up the right foot and hug the knees in. Whatever you do, keep the left foot flexed so it bends through the ankle. One more breath cycle here. Very good, coming all the way down. Finding a final resting position so you can stay with your knees bent if that feels good. If you need a little bit more space through your sacrum, you can open up your feet and knock the knees into the center, a little broken bridge here. You're welcome to have your legs outstretched. Or you can take the soles of the feet together for a reclined butterfly. Nestling the back of your head into the mat, comfortable position through your head, your neck, your shoulders. Being grateful for your practice Checking in with your body before we sit up. Just noticing how you feel without passing judgment. Take a body scan from the 
toes all the way up to the top of the head. Just one moment of rest before we transition and sit up. To make your way up, you can roll over onto your right side and use your left hand to help press you up back to your comfortable seat, which could be cross-legged or legs straight out. <sighs> Deep breaths. So we'll move into the neck. So one thing about the neck is that unlike the shoulder joint, your neck is not a ball and socket. So when you think about a ball and socket, you think about being able to freely move it in a swivel or in a circle. So you do want to move your neck in all directions, but you want to avoid doing full neck circles. It's unnecessary. It's not how the joint is designed to work. And it's also really compressive for the back of the head, the back of the neck. So instead, you'll want to tip your right ear to your right shoulder and then come back through center. Tip your left ear to your left shoulder back through center. Take your gaze over to the right, using the center as a point of return, and then taking your gaze over to the left. Tucking your chin to your chest. And then you can send your chin up. And go through that one more time. So right ear, right shoulder. Softness through your face, sitting up nice and tall. Left ear, left shoulder. We'll gaze right. Come back through center and then gaze left. Tucking the chin. and lifting the chin. Very good. Take your fingers to your shoulders and draw some really big sweeping circles, almost like there's a canvas board on either side of you and your elbows are markers. And you wanna draw the biggest circles possible. And it's okay if your fingers don't quite touch your shoulders and tension is just as important as movement here. So if you can get that motion anyway, Switch directions. And find some stillness. <sighs> Closing down the eyes or looking down the tip of the nose. This is your final position. So make it comfortable if you need to transition back lying down or if you want to take something to sit on to cushion the hips. Maybe switch the cross of your legs. Bring your attention back to your intention that you set at the beginning of our practice. It was maybe a mantra, a personal mantra, a word, a feeling that you're looking to cultivate more of. Maybe something you need to let go. And if your mind drew a blank, in the vein of decision fatigue. You can always rely on gratitude. Gratitude as your anchor and a simple thank you to your body, to your breath. Thank you to the space to practice. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Extra little sip of air at the top. Let it all go, exhale through the mouth. Thank you for making space and time to practice. I hope you'll revisit this practice over and over again and that it serves you in a different way each time you move. Have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, and we'll meet on the mat again soon. Peace.